Well, hi everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to some of you. Great to see you again. Um, thanks for tuning in to this sixth Breakfast Bite on Digital Citizenship. I'm Elizabeth. I'm mother of two rebel girls, nine and five years old, uh, and director of Copa Save Families Europe. And I'm going to co-host this bite with Isabel. Do you want to say something about yourself? Hi, I'm Isabel, communication officer from Cofasa Families Europe. I'm, uh, like some heard, I'm the tea lobbyist uh, in Cofasa because <laughs> I don't drink coffee. Absolutely. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I like basketball and penguins, which is also important. And yeah, I'm co-hosting here and um, wanted to say that you can definitely say hello, like many of you did already in the chat. If you do so, please select um, all panelists and all attendees so others can also see what you're saying. It's especially important if you leave a comment. And um, you could definitely also say your name or organization if you want. And uh, we just want to see who is out there. So we just launched a poll. Please fit it in. And we're going to share the results in a minute with you. Um, yeah, we have different options. <laughs> we didn't think of. Hello Vilnius. Hello Macedonia. Northern Hello Macedonia. Macedonia. Bon dia. Portugal. Hello Bulgaria. So the polls are coming in, the votes are coming in. I'll just give it one or two more seconds. Drum roll. Who is with us today? I have to say still quite a mix. Yes, but who's going to be on the top spot? Mm, I think it's close, it's close, it's close. Oh, you're a pedagogue. You see, you see? So many profiles. We can't fit in 10 options. It's probably easily 10 more profiles out there. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ta -da. Teachers. The teachers win again. <laughs> Hello, Austria. Hello, Copa Say Premises, Florian. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Greece, Thessaloniki. The guys gala. Philippines. Philippines. Hello, other side of the world. Is it like evening over there, I guess? Okay, here we go. Well, listen, that's a, quite a mix of, of people again, digital citizens or not. So thanks a lot for joining us. Mm, to kick off the webinar series, we sent the video address, uh, the video address of the uh, Executive Vice President of the European Commission, Margaret Vestaya, uh, last week, last Monday. It's still online. It's still worth watching. A big thank you on behalf of Copa Say Families Europe uh, to the Executive Vice President for her support and tireless work uh, to shape a digital Europe that works for society. It is uh, no easy challenge for her, uh, together with her team. Uh, Isabel, before starting with Christian, any tips? Yes, um, so to have a good experience, if possible, be close to your Wi-Fi router. Um, have your tea or something else uh, ready uh, to accompany for this bite. And important, if you have questions for Christian, put them please in the Q&A. You can also see them down at the bottom there. Um, for anything else, technical or comment, or just to say hello, please use the chat, as mentioned before. And if you want to uh, have a bit of a discussion on social media, online, uh, definitely tag us. It's uh, Kofasa uh, underscore EU, or use the hashtag that we use at the moment for the spites, which is um, Digital Families EU. Thanks. I think that's it. Great. Well, thank you very much. So, uh, for the sixth of our eight uh, digital citizenship bites, we're going to focus on creating a bully-free uh, zone offline and online. Uh, parents associations step-by-step -step do fantastic work in Croatia, supporting and empowering both parents and children, like all COFSA members do, in a wide range of areas. And, and this is also why this, this bite is especially dear to me um, and is a layer of digital citizenship, which I think is going to focus more on uh, the parents and children 
and, and what NGOs do uh, to support them in that respect. So we're delighted to have with us this morning Christian Orishkovich, uh, Child Assault Prevention Program Coordinator in uh, Step by Step. He holds an MA degree in political science and his professional interests for over 10 years are youth work, youth participation and children and youth safety on and offline. So today he's going to present how his organization is dealing with child abuse prevention in Croatia and give us some tips and tricks on creating a safer environment for children and young people um, in your communities. Welcome, Christian. Thank you very much for having me uh, on this uh, breakfast bite. I love that uh, say, that says as uh, something new. And I'm glad. With you? Your tea, yeah, your coffee. I have it. And I'm so glad to see all. Um, this many participants uh, here today, uh, especially from Croatia and from all other parts of Europe and the world. <laughs> so, shall we do a first little poll or two to measure the temperature out there? Yeah? Yes. So, we're going to launch a first poll. Now, just to say we have just under 90 participants, so we'll give a few seconds for people. But here we go. We want to ask you a first question. Does your organization have programs, projects, which specifically deal with the prevention of violence against and among children and young people? Yes or no? If yes, please share um, names, links with more details in the chat or later stay in touch. I yeah, of course. Christian would be interested. So the votes are coming in. So that way we get a feel of the knowledge out there as well. A few more seconds for the polling. CAP. Yeah, it's a program that I will talk about for sure. So here we go, Christian, what do you think? Oh, great. I'm glad to see the like, this kind of Big, uh, big, big number at the yes part. So, but also the quite big on the no. So I hope that today uh, webinar will inspire maybe somebody to to try to create something. Great stuff. So that was the first um, question. Then we have a second question for you all. Here we go. Thank you for all of those of you who are sharing these links. By the way, in the chat, we'll keep them and and uh, yeah. Okay, Made Airways in Belgium. Okay. Nice. Cyber. Hola, España. Okay, new poll. Do you think that classic forms of violence, such as peer to peer abuse, slapping, are less present nowadays than more modern forms of violence, grooming, sexting? And the votes are coming in. Velik online, online is really great, indeed. That's a great one in Belgium. Supported by, by uh, one of our COPASA members. <laughs> so the votes are coming in. We have 90 tuned in, more than 90. It's, it's going up and up. So welcome to those of you who've tuned in right now. And the results, drum roll. I need a drum. You hear that? Here we go. Da, da, okay. da. Also quite interesting. Uh, That's a big no, huh? Yeah. Well, Our probably, yeah. Present. Yeah. So mixed, mixed uh, feelings there. Okay, great. Well, Christian, um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you for, uh, for all of you that participated in the pool. Uh, for you uh, who may be tuned in right now, uh, I'm Christian. I'm from Parents Association Step by Step uh, in Croatia. And uh, today I will just share my screen. Elizabeth, I'm having again problem with disabled share screen. Really? Maybe you can share it uh, from your link that I sent you. Okay, wait. Okay, while we are uh, having uh, technical issues. You sure? 
is that that's again like the is this able share screen okay i may be again just a dent or something um wait a sec so bear with us right now i'm going to try and share my screen it's a prezi sophisticated stuff <laughs> <laughs> okay right i will now <coughs> try to share mine is that working yeah please just put it on a full screen mode please on a full screen mode yeah it's uh, down on the right you have like two arrows up and down two arrows up and down no that's not going to work okay i'm just trying to think how do i do this now hmm Okay, I can't see the full screen, that's the problem. And not even by clicking? If you click, you will just, yeah, maybe if. Ah, if okay, wait, I think, no, no. No, you can maybe just then put like this, so we have something and we can send the participants later the like the materials so they will have okay if you start talking i'll see what i can do here okay then okay uh, hello everyone again uh, we will start with the presentation now and i have i wanted to say right on the beginning that uh, i imagine this as a, like part of uh, debate conversation to be as interactive as possible in this format so please feel free to ask question in the q and a uh, it will be easier for uh, for uh, for uh, COFAS team to uh, look for the questions uh, if it's in the Q&A then in chat. So please put it there and we will try to answer it right away. But of course we will have the last part of the uh, of the of this webinar. Okay, great Elizabeth, thank you very much. Uh, we will have the last part of this webinar uh, dedicated just for the uh, Q&A. So you will have opportunity to post it uh, then. But of course I'm, encouraging you to ask it right away. So uh, I will uh, talk to you today about key steps to creating a bully-free zone offline and the online. For, uh, I will just briefly present uh, my organization so you can see what we are, we are doing it uh, and then I will talk about uh, uh, what is uh, bully-free zone and uh, what we, uh, we do uh, on that, uh, that part. So, uh, Parents Association Step by Step is a non-governmental and non-profit association uh, that's main uh, objective is to promote the value of the community focused on children, such society perceives children as the most valuable treasure and creates a prior to their welfare and developing and education. So we are focused to, uh, on working with children, youth and parents, of course. The topic uh, of prevention, the child abuse uh, from our, uh, parents association, association step by step started 20 years ago uh, with introducing the child assault prevention uh, program uh, or CAP. Uh, we saw many attendees to uh, put the CAP as a creation uh, prevention program and there are um, most of them I know from being active in this program here in Croatia and it's uh, still the largest and the long, longest running program, uh, pre preventing program uh, in Croatia. But of course, we didn't stop on it and we were constantly doing new projects and activities to tackle in this, this issue. Uh, and the most recent example uh, of uh, new project that we are tackling the issue of uh, assault and abuse is our ongoing Erasmus program called STOP, Stop Child Abuse through effective training 
and augmented reality. The aim of the project is to uh, decrease the sexual assault, abuse, or assault or abuse, and exploitation of young people. So it's focused more on sexual abuse among young people. And of course, the most, the most relevant project for this Breakfast Bite, uh, and maybe you will be more interesting about it, is our project Bully Free Zone. Uh, that is ongoing project that was started in 2019 uh, that's aimed to strengthen the competencies of parents and children to grow up safely without, without peer violence and by providing necessary knowledge and skill in prevention, recognition and response to bullying and cyberbullying cases. This is the project that uh, is our, let's say, uh, newest project that we finally gather uh, something uh, together to have it uh, and to put together and parents and teachers, uh, parents and children uh, together. Uh, of course, the one of the most relevant association, uh, we are uh, one of the most relevant uh, organization or association for the topic of violence prevention. And we have been tr uh, trying for many years to, uh, to design a project that will be more comprehensive and to gather all relevant stakeholders who can contribute to general uh, prevention of violence among children and youth. So uh, for that, uh, that time, we were gathering relevant experts, other civil society organizations, public and state bodies, uh, and all those who can help us uh, in our goal to keep all children safe from violence, various forms uh, of violence uh, in Croatia. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we always have uh, the like, issue where our government and uh, other political elite are not that focused on that, that part. So uh, in Croatia, it's still the NGOs uh, such as ours and uh, a few others that are tackling this issue and putting it as a priority. Shall I, Which, shall I move the slide? Uh, yeah, you can move now the slide. Again. Okay. Uh, so, with this story that I said uh, briefly about our project, and I will get back to it uh, later on, uh, I, begin, I will start to, to talk to you about uh, steps that you have to, let's say, go through in order to develop uh, something like this in your, uh, in your community. But, for, uh, of course, Bully Free Zone is not only a physical space that you do the workshop on, or some presentation lectures, but also it's very important to raise awareness of the importance uh, of solving this very unfortunately always relevant problem and topic. And I said it, I, I started with a sentence that I don't know if it's already out there as a, like some sentence that we use, but if you don't want to do something big, start small. You have to start from yourself. You have to, uh, educate yourself. So Google, uh, study, ex uh, explore your surroundings, ask if there, uh, see where, if there's uh, any institution or non-governmental organization or somebody else who deals with the topic. Ask how and where you can get involved in some initial training or education and be very active in it. So try to get as many information as you want and and how to achieve it how what do you want to do what is the problem that you see in your surrounding and ask and anything that you're interesting about implementing that program activity in your community of course then try to do it Bill, uh, bullying as we all already know unfortunately affects at least one in every maybe five or six child and that number is of course unfortunately again even higher in reality because those affected are more often ashamed and afraid to report the abuse. We have a lot of teachers today here, so I will try to focus on schools and the nonprofit part of society uh, similar. So uh, if your school organization already have anti-bullying policy in a place, there is some tactics that you can do just to uh, have learning and positive social interaction and space that you uh, can put that bully uh, anti-bully policy in practice. So 
hold regular meetings. That's, that's one, one step that is really important. So do it periodically and briefly, briefly meets all of, of the key. Uh, so the, so, sorry, so the meetings have two key purposes. First, you have uh, provided the time to remind your students, pupil, pupil staff even, to, uh, of the rules and to discuss bullying issues, topic, and, and maybe behavioral concerns. They also create the, the sense of cohesiveness. Kids, your, your students or your staff feels like they're part of the team, like part of the community. You can pick a weekly time for a short meeting and set a clear expectation. As the, teach, as the teacher, uh, you can facilitate the discussion and allow your kids, your children, your students to uh, participate in age appropriate ways. It's always important to, to know how to talk to different age group of the, if, because you, are not, you, will, you will not talk to uh, elementary school pupils the same way as you will do with high schoolers. Second, also very important part is focus on accountability. While bu uh, uh, bullying prevention often focus on bullies and other victims, it's important to impress, impress upon your students as a role of a bystander. It's very important. Uh, 2001 study shows that, uh, that peer intervention stopped more than 55% of bullying incidents. It's not only to provide more eyes watching out for bullying behavior, it also gets your kids uh, to empathetic state of mind. It, it's very important to, uh, uh, to teach your child, uh, kids, pupils, uh, to, to, it's not good to stand quietly uh, by and watching somebody else being hurt or even picked on. It's uh, not that comfortable because kids are all uh, are usually not uh, not telling anything because they think that they will not be very popular then, etc. Connecting to that is the next step. You should create safe communication channels because alarming even 64 or 65% of the kids do not report bullying, bullying uh, behavior because you have to create a safe environment for the, for the kids to tell the story, to, to tell if they are bullied or they see the bullying in practice because kids are usually very mean to, the, to, to other kids that say because they are telltale and that, that's a very big problem. And we saw that in, uh, in our practice uh, in a CAT program that we are working with teachers, the experts and the kids and the parents, of course. So also very great idea for the communica safe communication channel. You can set up like some suggestion box, anonymous bullying report form. Very easy or, of course, very effectively, you can do the you can say and repeat constantly your, your pupils and your uh, kids that you're working on or young people even, this, the time in the day or the week that they can always go to you and, re and talk to you about issues they have regarding bullying, seeing bullying, or maybe being bullied themselves. Uh, I see that, the, do we have a question? No, it's in chat. Okay, sorry. Uh, Next thing, involve parents. Parents are very important part of anti-bullying equation, but they often lack the tools to recognize and deal with the bullying. Your insight is very valuable and parents may not have the same opportunities you have to observe how their children interact with others. So you should always send materials, information materials home with students and or give presentation and PTO meetings. Help parents to understand signs that their children may be bully as well as signs of their being victims. And uh, not the last, but very important for my, from my side part is to be their best resource. Really, uh, it's a very big, uh, how they say, tall order. 
but as a as a, as a teacher or a head of organization you are in a unique position to deal with school bullying so, uh, show your students that you are a trustworthy adult that they can uh, go and that you will help them not just to listen to them of course to listen to them but also to help them and be, uh, uh, bullying bullying is really a serious issue that affects uh, well-being of a bully and the bystanders i already mentioned the bystanders and it's very important to talk about it if it can happen it can happen anywhere and any time even in the privacy of home uh, and includes physical, verbal, and social bullying. So we have to be very aware constantly of all the, uh, all the kinds of bullying out there. Uh, and the last, uh, last point, uh, reinforcing bullying prevention skills. If you talk to your children about bullying prevention once, you have, you have to remind them constantly about it. So it's not... I, I'm, I know that in school schedules, it's very hard to put something new to the curricula, but you can always make some posters that, that can be in the classrooms or in your workspace, just to always remind them what they can do to prevent it themselves of being bullied, but also their friends being bullied. Uh, Elizabeth, please, the next slide. So this, this I was talking, this part was more about the offline bullying free, but the big, big, uh, big part nowadays for, for sure, you all are aware of that and I will not uh, teach you about how, how important it is to talk about cyberbullying nowadays. We are all here online now. We had examples here on a webinar about cyberbullying. You know, this can happen to really anybody and especially for the kids who are not yet very, aware of all the uh, all the problems that can happen so very briefly cyber bullying in one sentence is every bullying happening online so any electronic means can be the means of a bullying cyber bullying if you see here i put few uh parts or few dots bullet points what is the most common um, cyber bullying practices nowadays because you have to think about what are kids using nowadays so it's not just hate speech in the comments we have now the application that are more private in a way because interactions are more limited to classroom to the group of friends or even to the group for something that's happening right away for example high school high school seniors that are taking the state exam they all have one group where they share and also can be a place for online bullying uh, process so instant messaging and texting harassments this is a very big uh, big uh, big problem nowadays uh, because uh, we are all, come on, if we look on our phones, we all have WhatsApp, Viber, and everything that is get, get there so we can communicate to each other. And that's the applications also where bullying is happening. That's a cyber bullying also. Because kids gang up on the victims in a text and text attacks. They send hundreds of texts and thousands, hundreds or even a thousand text, text messages to the victim, cell phone and other mobile device because they're all connected. And they result, uh, there is a few uh, examples how uh, kids manage to make a large cell, cell phone uh, bill for the victim. And of course, the parents were very angry on their child, child because that's their phone bill, but it was nothing to do with the victim. Kids may create a screen name that is very similar to the victim's name. They just add or uh, exclude one vowel, for example, and they send the messaging in their name without even knowing it. Also, using websites to bully others. 
by using websites to post other kids' photos, videos, or even their personal information, such as phone number, address, for example, to humiliate them, the kids who is targeted could be in very great danger. Sending pictures through email, cell phones. So I, I'm, I'm um, putting cell phones here because cell phones and everything that is mean uh, and all the application that we are using nowadays in our cell phones. Sending other kids pictures with the rumors to everyone in your cell phone context menu or a context uh, dia menu and email addresses book is very, very cruel and harmful. And again, impersonating the cyberbullying victim. Posting the, teen, uh, the, the targeted victim uh, may post erotic messages, suggestive messages in hate group, chat room, posting as the victim, inviting the attackers against them. They give the name, the address, the phone number, as I already mentioned to the victim, to make the hate group job very, very much easier. So they're posting it there and the other haters are joining in. Also, the very relevant thing to, to talk about in cyberbullying uh, practices is being cruel by playing interactive games. We, we have great, we had the great webinar about games and what that includes, what, what does everything includes in games. But we have to be very, um, in a sense, uh, we have to know what are the games that are out there and how they are working. Because you can talk to really a numerous type, uh, number of people on game and you don't know them. You don't know that you, you, have a nick, you have a nickname, but they have also a nickname. And they can put really anything, as you said. And it's very important, the, the, the thing that I'm always stressing out when talking about uh, cyberbullying and uh, using of social media, parents and teachers who are not, who was not using that in their time of youth and be, playing the games, you should always, if you, if you hear the word, that you don't understand coming out of your students or children's mouth, you should always ask, what is that? And not to answer, oh, you, 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 you kids, that, that was not in my day. I don't understand that. You have to understand that because they will, uh, talk, uh, they, they will use it. We have a TikTok now. TikTok is in any uh, statistic report, where the bullying is happening, and I'll, I have a graph later. TikTok is not included yet because it's popular uh, for the last few months, maybe one, maybe two. It's the, almost the most popular, as popular as Instagram. And here you can go, Elizabeth, on the, another slide. I will just have you uh, to see like 10 tips to help you how to spot the signs of the cyberbullying. It's very important to, to look for them in all your surrounding, especially in a classroom or home, of course, with your children. If they're uneasy, nervous, and scared about going to school or even outside, that's a first red flag. It's a major worrying sign that your child is uncomfortable in their school environment of being around their classmates. Some other signs to look out uh, for are if your child constantly asking if they can skip school by staying home or of the, if they make calls to you to come to home earlier from school. If that's very usual, that's a warning sign. Also, if they are nervous or jumpy when texting, uh, when, uh, when they're texting or using social media sorry just wanted to so if they are uh nervous and jumpy while using social media that's all uh, that's also a warning sign if they are extremely anxious about their phone tablet or laptop especially while you while you are viewing the, the device Keep devices in commonly used area. For example, it's an easy way to help maintain the watchful eye. So you don't have to be 
like how they say helicopter parent who are uh, looking over everything that they are typing, but try to uh, put it somewhere that you will have a glance of eye on it. What are they doing? The one thing that is very, also a red flag is if children or young people are upset and frustrated after going online or after gaming. If they are just angry because they lost the game, that's understandable. But if you see the change in a behavior, also talk to them about it. Christian, because you just talked about gaming, we have a question. Okay, great. Gaming, which is, in which way does the bullying in games take place? What do they, uh, what do they do one and other? You can see to one another. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jana. I will say that that's how you pronounce. Thank you for the question. So, uh, in um, in a games, games are like uh, more uh, real life uh, chatting. So they are really talking to the mics in the their ear earbuds so as we talking now not you and you and me but for example me elizabeth and isabella uh, isabel it's when you talk to them and you uh, for example beat them in a fight that is uh, that is on the on the game they start to telling them i'm really cruel and meaningful uh, meaningful words so they starting to swear if they are on the same language knowledge so if they don't speak another language it can also be very hurtful. So the, the mostly common uh, bullying uh, activity on the games are via, uh, via, uh, via earphones, so that they're, they're talking to each other mean, and then they're also ganging up on other. So if somebody is uh, more in a that community, in more time, they are then tackling that, that person uh, more just to uh, get them out of the game. So that's also the part of the bullying. And of course, uh, most of the games are also connected to the social media. And it's really easy to find your account on social media on the games. And then again, another activities on cyberbullying begin. Okay. Yeah, and I think also the, the, the bite of last uh, Tuesday was pretty interesting at showing how um, it can actually be quite structural as well. Uh, the example of Fortnite was really interesting. So maybe yes. once the videos are out, you could, you could take a look at that bite more specifically if you're interested in the gaming world. Yeah. So yeah, it was the breakfast bite that was really tackling that issue. Specifically, yeah. Specifically. So I hope, Jana, I'll answer you. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Christian. Okay. okay also gave me a time to drink <laughs> a little bit of water. Thank you. Hey, take the time, absolutely. <laughs> um, again, we are talking so about signs. We have to an unexpected weight loss or weight gain, headaches, stomachs, and trouble eating. That's all the signs that we, we are uh, familiar with from the, like, uh, as I put it in a poll, uh, old fashioned ways of bullying, let's say, because they are scared and they're, but th that's why the, the cyber bullying is as, as big uh, as a problem as a regular way, even maybe even more because they, the kids think that they are safe online, safer online because they are home, but they can be victims. Mm -hmm. Of course, trouble sleeping at night or sleepy during the day. It's also a sign. You, ha you, ha you always look, look that on, on your child, of course. But it, it, it cannot be just um, assigned to he's young, he stayed up a lot. And so you have to see it and talk to, talk to, talk, talk to your ch children about it just to see if there's a, uh, something you should be worrying about. Loss of interest in favorite hobbies and activities. Very, very big uh, sign uh, about some, that something is wrong. If your child has suddenly lost interest in their favorite sport or hobby, it may be an indicator of cyberbullying. They may be trying to dis distance themselves from the others make, uh, that makes fun of them or attempting, attempting to fit in. 
talk with your child, child and uh, continue to encourage them to do what makes them happy and not uh, uh, to, to be afraid of others. Suddenly seems depressed or antisocial, withdrawn from close friends and family. That's all the uh, very, very big red flags. It can be really difficult to recognize those signs because it can be caused for many, many different things. And as I already mentioned, you are not supposed to become helicopter parents who is uh, overly anxious, suspicious about what their child is doing online uh, on their mobile device. But if you notice one or more of these signs, it can help to pinpoint the distress in your child's life. And it, if in that case, you have to create a safe space with an open communication for your child to communicate on what's going in their life and track out that, that ways of stop uh, the cyberbullying. And I will again stress out and repeat myself because I think it's very important. If you are not familiar with all the games or the application that your child or young, young person, even if it's younger than 15, are using, please try, uh, ask them to explain to you what's going on on there. And it will be fine. You will, you will know, you will ha have opportunity to maybe Google about it. Maybe you should Google, okay, so the TikTok is now out. I don't know what TikTok is, but I can Google, is there some uh, issues with the TikTok security breach, uh, ways of bullying on the TikTok, just to, just to be aware of something that is maybe going on. I took it off my daughter's phone and replaced it with something else, supposedly safer. Yeah, great, great example. Thank you but very much, Elizabeth. It's not easy to that. keep in, you know, and, and it's a really useful checklist, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and now, uh, as, a, as a, this part of like, just to see what cyberbullying is and where, where's the signs, you should really looking forward, uh, looking to it so you can create safer online bully-free zone. Because if you are around them all the time, you are the first person that should uh, act uh, to, to, to create the online uh, bully-free zone. And now I will just have next slide uh, about what, uh, le uh, so less lessons learned. Uh, no, uh, the next one, Elizabeth, please, again. Can you click? Uh, on? <clears throat> you mean the last one? Yeah, so th this is the graph that, uh, yeah, go back to the graph, please. So the Sorry. right. Can you see Christian. it? Can you see yes. it? Okay. Is it, uh, Isabel? Yes, we can see it. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to say that we have another uh, comment and question. Okay, and great. Before maybe we go on, it's from okay. Frida who says that she's working, uh, it's more peer to peer. And she's saying that sometimes kids and youth would feel more comfortable and safer to talk to someone close to their own age. And um, what, what ways would you name to make this happen more around the world? And should more organizations have this kind of youth volunteer work? Okay, so yeah, uh, as, as you already, uh, as you, you heard on the, at the beginning, my uh, primarily focused for years are youth work. So youth work is the way that uh, it's really um, very important about, uh, in, uh, this was Frida was asking about peer-to-peer -peer, uh, talking. So if your child are, as I was uh, mentioning the hobbies, all of them have some hobbies, sports or interesting, not all of them, but most of them have. So if you, if you encourage your kids uh, to volunteer, to uh, volunteer in uh, some NGOs in your surrounding, uh, in Red Cross, for example, uh, in all other, so you have there, you have people who are uh, more of their age and they are working together. But usually the, the big part of the association staff and volunteers are educated in uh, bullying and to look for the signs. So the age to age, peer to peer support, it's very important. And it's usually mo more, uh, uh, the, the more reported abuse was happened in that kind of way. 
and and that's why it's also very important for you as a teacher or as a parent uh, is to uh, just to know the friends uh, because they are usually uh, friends who will discuss about something that's happening but there's also few uh, f- a few examples where friends acted on it and tell the parents of that friends friend uh, that something is r- wrong so yeah uh, the 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 i don't know how to say the strength of the uh, volunteering group and the group from the i don't know practice in handball volleyball i don't know uh, or some uh, youth club you if you you will always probably encourage your 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 children to to take interest in something uh, outside the school so some extracurricular uh, activities and there that that will be there will be also the safer environment for them uh, to not be bullying. Of course, we have examples about being bullied in a youth clubs, in the soccer team, in the football team. But uh, in this kind of activities, there's always one adult that is lesser adult than parents or grandparents or teachers. So a younger, a younger person who will uh, who will talk to them and who will know how to act for for example just to call you for example as a parent so i don't know if i answered that i was just talking a lot about it so i'm not i, I hope that uh frida yeah uh, is i think uh, the message got across that um talking to a peer can be very helpful and i guess there are different ways of putting in place um, these, you know, channels to talk to peers. Uh, okay, so I, I saw also the question of, uh, from Giuliano, which is the source of the stats on the screen, where are people cyberbullied? Uh, yeah, I put the, I, I, I put the link on, the, on the, that site um, at the end of my presentation. Great. I will send that link. Uh, I just put this and I was hoping that somebody will ask for the source so that I don't... Uh, uh, forget to mention that. So this was the stat that um, I just used, so that we see that Instagram is still the as Instagram is still the most popular app now, uh, social media app uh, these days. So it's also the most common place of cyberbullying. But there's a link, there's a uh, website that have like more than fifty different research researches about where are people cyber bullied and how they are cyber bullied so it's very uh, it's very useful to have this uh, this um, link that i put on the end of my presentation and i will send it of course uh, to elizabeth one more time if there's if you cannot click it because if it's easy to find you could even put it in the chat yes i will i will uh, i will yeah i can that way it. they can they can sift through it while they listen to you yes Okay, just just a second. I will. And then, of course, right. we'll integrate it in the presentation on on the yes. the website. And in the meantime, uh, while you do that, we have the question of what is the app TikTok. Ha. Okay. Uh, okay, just just one one minute. I will get to that right away. Uh, okay, I'm here. Chat. So I mean, I'm, also maybe I'm someone younger. Chat about bullying. Thanks. Okay, so TikTok. TikTok is a new application that uh, was uh, going viral nowadays, uh, and it's actually the the social media that is uh, using most of the features uh, that Instagram have, but it's more uh, focused on videos short videos that you can edit in a different kind of way you have you can edit add so many different effects effects that uh, that videos are making more funny there are also interactive videos where computer or the tiktok algorithm ask you a question and then you answer it with a nod of hand or uh just to show something yeah so it's more it's a social media based 
uh, focused on short, uh, funny and uh, entertaining video of the person who is account holder. Is there any clearer now? What, yeah, what it's, a, it's a video sharing platform. Yes. Yeah. Check it out. If your child or whoever asked the question, if, it, if your uh, child is using it or a child in your entourage is using it, um, it's worth looking into. Okay, thank you. Uh, Isabel, is there any more questions that we can answer right now or? Uh, no, for now. Okay, uh, great. So, uh, Elizabeth, please, the next slide. So, uh, now for the, um, let's say, last part, it's the lessons learned. I, so, I was thinking about what, what should I left you with uh, here today. And I think that it's very important that you left with some maybe new knowledge about all the aspects of the bullying and the how to create safer, safer uh, environment uh, on and offline for the child, uh, for the children and the youth. But it's important to have um, what we can take from the from the situations uh, that we faced. So lessons learned: Bill bullying is no longer limited to the schoolyard of caf and cafeterias. So th th these two things is always so. Kids are uh, having fight in the schoolyard. It's like it was, but it's not limited uh, to that anymore. We went to exactly uh, so cyberbullying any harmful effects. It's uh, it ideal. It it still happens on daily basis. However, we uh, per parental monitoring, proper responses, and preventive steps can reduce the uh, the emotional effects of cyberbullying if your child is a victim of the cyberbullying it can crush uh, it can crush your child but you can help your child involved past the hurt talk openly with your kids uh, and ask them to tell you how they feel encourage them to stay positive and learn uh, a lesson from the situation and unfortunate circumstances also the responsibility it's a big thing uh, hesitant about providing your kids with a cell phone? Yes, of course. It's always, uh, always uh, as a question that all parents says. When is the right way? Uh, when it's the right time to uh, to give your child a phone? Uh, phone, and it's earlier and earlier nowadays because it's easier for you to communicate with your kids, especially if there there's a uh, extracurricular activities involving. Considering our society's digital uh, dependency, we appreciate uh, that cell phones are amazing tools that enhance how we function daily and at any age. Provide your teen, it, it, you should provide your teen with a cell phone and you're handing over a device that can basically symbolize a weapon. It's always referred as a weapon when we talk about cyberbullying. For emotional attacks, threats, and torments, anywhere and anytime, beyond the school wall, uh, walls, as I uh, already mentioned. Fewer research, uh, few researches uh, shown that uh, 16 would be the most appropriate age when the uh, teens should get the phone. Uh, because cyberbullying typically occurs primarily through the social networking and texting, and kids who are uh, cyberbullying victims learn what kind of power they, ha uh, uh, they are having, having a smartphone. Kids uh, learn quickly uh, how to handle uh, applications and new technologies. But on the six, if they are if they are sixteen, uh, it we can um, we can uh, sorry I lost the word. Uh, we, we can think that they are uh, mature enough to handle this kind of situation or mature enough to uh, talk to you about it. Awareness. I said it on the beginning of uh, my webinar that it's the most important thing that we can do as uh, NGOs, as uh, teachers, as other organization is to raise awareness about the issues that is happening. As cyberbullying draws awareness to the uh, to this, uh, to the safe safe space of schools and how techno, techno, technology, technological 
epidemic is spreading, pun none intended. The, uh, teens can uh, treat uh, one another in devastating ways. We all know that. It can cause adolescents depression and even suicide. Shockingly, a uh, few years ago, I uh, was doing the presentation on uh, bullying and the prevention of bullying and suicide, suicidal uh, attempts. It was, uh, I get an example from the audience where one uh, little girl uh, talk, uh, tell me about the site, website, not application, not uh, Instagram, Facebook. It was a website uh, where kids are sharing the ways they will kill themselves. So it's very shocking. I was re I, I, I just stopped there and I didn't know what to tell what to tell them. There is a whole community where they share the tips and tricks on how to kill themselves, and that's the kids under under the age of eighteen. So yeah, that's that's happening out there, and we should really look uh, look out for that. And the last part, it's everybody who is working nowadays. Uh, are we will uh, hear me about it so online schooling and online meetings it's something that's happening nowadays every day we are all talking to each other via uh so, so social medias and via technology and we see how simple is it and how easy is to to say hello to people from philippines from croatia from uh, brussels from the uh, Italy, from the Greece. And it's really amazing how you can connect and stay connected to your, uh, to your partners, to your uh, friends uh, and acquaintances all around the world uh, using it. And we are now faced with a situation where we have to use the technologies and that weapons uh, of cyberbullying because all the kids are now online schooling. They, they are constantly on the mobile phone. And there's a new, new studies that, is, uh, ar that are rising on how much we have to be careful more than ever about uh, how our kids are using the, uh, the platforms. Because Zoom, for example, we all see the how, and we will talk about it also, I think, on the first breakfast bite, how Zoom was the first attack about how sh uh, their security policy is not very good and we are all using a zoom so yeah we have to be also responsible and uh, be aware of what we are talking and posting online because the setting example it's really important so yeah lessons learned everything you should you do you should do it that can fit the online environment also but always be aware of all the red flags out there so uh, for, for this part, I'm uh, over now and I will left the, uh, the last half hour uh, for the Q&A because I already saw a few questions that was really interesting and I'm uh, hoping that uh, you will have it more. Uh, so as you see, while we're waiting for the questions, uh, on the right bottom part is the links where I took some of the, the data. And also you can see my contact here, so my email contact, and you can uh, email me and you can uh, ask me a question if, the, if something uh, uh, will come up tomorrow or maybe the day after that. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was uh, useful on so many levels, uh, not just on a professional level, but definitely on a personal level as well. Uh, Isabel, you've been monitoring the, the chat. Is, shall we bring in some questions? Yes, we already have a few, but uh, one very interesting, I mean, all interesting, but uh, let's start with another one on peer-to-peer. -peer. Someone mm -hmm. is asking, um, are there any people who work with peer-to-peer -peer online to prevent or solve online bullying? Uh, are there anybody who is uh, working on an online peer-to-peer? -peer? Yes. Well. Uh, the the all the organizations that are working for, in uh, cyberbullying 
department, let's say that, like that, or activities with cyberbullying issues are mostly um, focused on exactly peer-to-peer -peer, uh, abuse because it's the most common. Because on the social medias and the apps and games, they are basically more, uh, more or less age group, pop the same age group popular. So, yeah, the, the, uh, all the organization and activities uh, tackling the issue of cyberbullying is tackling the the problem of the peer to peer or person to person abuse online on the various kind of application and games. I can also see that some people also share the names of their organizations or projects that do that. For example, we have uh, Cyberhus from Denmark or mm -hmm. SafeNet from Bulgaria um, has a program called Cyber Scouts. Now, Dej, can, can we ask you to share with the attendees as well, all panelists and attendees, so they can see the link you just posted? Yeah, I saw the question from uh, Josipa. Sorry. It was like some link for the last uh, Christian. Uh, no, um, sorry. I lost the question. I think it was if the links from the last slide. Can we get the links from yeah. the last slide to chat? Okay, 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 great. But we will definitely also make the presentation available to you. Sure, it'll be, on, it'll be online later today. So, um, yeah. but do you want me to share the screen again or? No, 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 I will, no. I will just post the... Uh, that would be great, that would be great. So people maybe will use it right away. And then, yeah, Frida was saying that they use that as well with Big Youth, and I guess we'll hear more about it. And then here's an awesome guide for parents on TikTok. Do you see that link? Yeah. That was another interesting one. We have another question on the graph that you shared on, you know, okay. um, someone is asking, do you have a comparison with numbers of users of these platforms? Uh, I don't have it, sorry, just now, but uh, I'm sure that if, some, if uh, you um, Google the users of the social media nowadays, you will see a lot of, a lot of graphs. Sorry that I didn't put that. I can find it now, but I don't, I don't think that we should now Google something new. So sorry, I don't have the comparison, but there's a lot of, a lot of graphs, pictures and reports about uh, all kinds of um, uh, connections to how many users of the Instagram, uh, Facebook and Twitter and WhatsApp and Viber uh, are, how they rise and how the bullying also um, correlate with, uh, with that, that. And also uh, in which way the cyber bullying can happen on Instagram, WhatsApp, TikTok, Snapchat and everything that uh, Everybody, I will not say kids using the basic, like everybody used today. That's the thing. I mean, the focus is on, on youth, but of course, this can affect adults as well. And I think the mental health dimension of this that you mentioned is, is really pretty fundamental. Um, and in that sense, we try to work with Mental Health Europe on, on this aspect, um, as well as other key partners. So we have... We have another question from Jana, it's mm -hmm. also in the Q&A. Uh, Christian, I don't know if you see it, but it says, what's your opinion about the new self-hate phenomenon, where a student writes hate comments on their own platform using a fake account? Yeah, so uh, I'm not, I was not, um, I, I was not uh, 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 researching about self-hate that a lot, but I also uh, heard, heard about that. And I think it's very, um, very problematic uh, about uh, the self-hate. Uh, you will put it in a quote, so uh, I bet, and I'm uh, agreeing with that because, um, unfortunately, there, there's a, uh, there's some stud studies show that uh, self-hate comments with a fake account on your own social media are bringing the popularity of your profile. So. Uh, the cyberbullying 
on the one hand, it's very problematic, and on the other, uh, it's still problematic, but uh, it became a trend because you have to have haters to be popular. So yeah, the self-hate, as you put it, that's why I'm saying you should put it in a quote because they don't hate themselves that much if we're talking about the same thing. Of course, there's a, a lot of anxious kids out there and uh, people who are not that very self, their self-esteem is low. But yeah, the commenting on your post uh, about hateful things under the fake name it's just, it, it, some studies showed that that's the way the popularity of your account and traction on it became more trending. And trending is, as you know, the, 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 the word that uh, are describing how popular somebody account or picture or post are. Okay. We have a comment here about the fact that unfortunately there is a tendency in big cities, I don't know, this person mentions here, I'm not sure which country, but in big cities, kids get their first smartphone at the age of seven when they start, you know, first grade at school. Is that a common practice in Croatia or? Um... Well, I think it's common practice uh, in Croatia, but also probably- uh, Across Europe, uh, huh? Across Europe. If not globally, because yeah. I, I don't have kids my, myself yet, but uh, I, I think that if when, child, when your child go to school and you are working, for example, or you're at home and you cannot uh, bring him or her or them to school and bring them back, you will, you will give them the phone uh, so they can call you if something happened, uh, uh, so they can... Um, always be uh, on your disposal, let's say it like that, because you are scared. And will you, will you wait for them to get to high school uh, just to give them the phone? No, because you will not be able also to reach them in, in time. Yeah? I think that that's the, the point. So I'm not shocked at all that seven is a age that uh, kids are using the yeah it's true it's uh it's a pretty common i think commonplace and that that question came from bulgaria by the way um i think it's interesting as well that we have quite a few social workers um tuning in here today mm -hmm. um and we did not add them to the the list of profiles you know of people listening in i think no, we this, said that it's 10 more of the 10 that you are at least 10 from, more yeah. at least yeah. 10 more profiles yeah. all kinds of uh professionals working with children, I guess, all kinds. Uh, so not just families and teachers uh, and policy makers, but also, uh, yeah. So that, that, <clears throat> that's interesting. And we have one social worker asking to receive the, the, uh, the, the Prezi after, but you can be sure that this will be online uh, most probably later today, like the other presentations of the last bites. And by the way, this is recorded. So the video will be available um, probably end of May. So that's another thing, if that's helpful to you, that's to uh, Marina, who asked the question. I guess I have a comment for myself uh, as a parent, but also, you know, as Cofasé Families Europe, you know, uh, you mentioned in your, uh, one of your slides, uh, connecting with parents. Yeah. So when you were talking about the meetings in schools, I think you were talking about holding meetings regularly with the children, yeah? Uh, so teacher children. Um, would you advise having parents there? That's yes. a question. So, so or, the, would you, or would you advise having separate uh, safe spaces for parents to have open discussions about um, the challenges they're having and solutions as well? I know that uh, in Belgium, the country that I live in, members of COFASE go into the schools, so the NGOs go into the schools to provide all kinds of support and talks on how to address this. Okay, yes, when I was talking about involving, involving the parents in a, uh, and how important part of the equation for anti-bullying practices are, of course, parents should be as involved as possible. So, of course, you, you will easy, talk though. to... It's not easy, It's not easy. It's not easy. It's very hard because uh, here an example easy. for the program that I'm uh, coordinating here in Croatia. We have the program that it's 
uh, that uh, we are talking uh, with the school staff, all the school staff, so mm -hmm. not just teachers, then parents and then children. We want for all the, we, we call it in cap, that we are doing the program for the kids and their important others, adults. So not parents, all the important adults. Mm -hmm. It's very important to constantly involve parents and uh, lunch ladies, lunch, lunch, lunch persons uh, in uh, an equation of, in preventing the child abuse, uh, child abuse. Because you don't know to whom will child talk about what they are having problem or who do they, they have problems with. So yes, of course, <coughs> parents sh should be involved separately with you as a teacher, but also on the workshops that are, that are together with the uh, uh, school teacher, the children and parents all together to, uh, to talk and know how to talk about it and how to look for the signs. Because parents should be really a role model in that way also. Yeah, I mean, I know that the Kmop platform, Live Without Bullying in Greece, um, Greece yeah. supports indeed in the same way as uh, this program to support um, victims of bullying, but indeed they have teachers and parents connecting as well. You know, so the questions are not just from the younger persons, but also from the parents and the teachers. And that kind of holistic way of seeing it and being able to connect with the different people affected directly or indirectly for us is a is a win-win and has to happen because parents often don't know where to turn either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's why we in step by step are yeah. always trying to also to to promote, let's say, the, the big the big uh, the the importance of involving the parents. That's why in CAP program we have a uh, workshop just for designed for parents, and also in bully free zone we are we, we are we we will do after this uh, all um, finished uh, the workshops uh, for parents especially and also together with their uh, kids. So the workshops in bully free zone uh, project. Yeah. And that yeah, there's a link in uh, in your Prezi to the Bully Free Zone uh, project online, or uh, we don't have the website yet mm -hmm. on the Bully Free Zone. Uh, we will have it as a part of our website, uh, okay. step by step. Uh, but yeah, we are currently developing uh, the, okay. this part. So yeah, of course we will uh, post it uh, uh, everywhere so that uh, we reach uh, to as many people as possible. Great, and there was a comment that was made um, by Sylvia, actually, from Step by Step last year at one of our meetings on the fact that to deal with the online world and to deal with online cyberbullying, very often you need to come back to basic offline skills, human skills of dialogue and emotional intelligence so that probably a first step is to have a real dialogue with your child and to connect, you know? I don't know, so that kind of, you know, that whole idea that to deal with the online world, you really need to step out and stay offline and build the offline skills. Because everybody talks about digital skills, digital skills, digital skills, but um, to tackle the online world, that was quite a strong message, I think, that came from step by step on the fact you need to go back to basics. Back to basics, yeah. Mm. Exactly. So, do we have any more questions? Q and A. We have lots of links in the chat um, that I think have been shared. I don't know. We, we can try and share these after. There are also plenty of links in the Q and A answer. Um, ah, yeah, in the answered ones as exactly. well. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. also go there. So, lots of sharing here. Yeah. Lots of sharing. It's great. It's very nice to see that. And we have a big youth crowd as well here. I see if we're okay. Should more? Yeah, well, there was, yeah. I mean, should more organizations have, I'm just trying to read Frida's question again here. We have lots of youth working in our organization. One reason being that most kids and youth feel safer to talk to someone closer to their own age. 
Yes, and I think we also shared some ways of doing this. Um, and should more organizations have this kind of youth volunteer work more? <sighs> yes, probably. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an important question, I think. And by feeding that into the discussion, I think you're giving the listeners lots and lots of ideas. I'm just thinking here. And online platforms for peer-to-peer -peer sharing, I mean, how would that be just, because Instagram doesn't really offer that, or does it? I mean, you can have Facebook groups, you can have WhatsApp groups. How, you can how, have what, also what would be like a, Instagram direct message groups. Ah, direct message groups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we have the same challenge with your, we're a European network and, you know, trying to connect with everybody in the network is, is a challenge. Um, and I think um, there are so many possibilities out there. But choosing the right platform, a safe platform, <laughs> like you said. Yeah. We have one question from Loretta say, mm -hmm. asking, do you have any recommendations for the national curriculum or you orient your work on the project activities more? Uh, thank you, Loretta, for the question. Uh, a recommendation for the national curriculum. Uh, so I'm not sure if I understand that correctly, but we uh, in Croatia, uh, we are doing the CAP program as a, so it's uh, the program that's happening all around Croatia and all 21 counties. Uh, and we are incorporating it in the curriculas uh, of schools and kindergartens that are uh, implementing it. So our work is oriented, yes, on the projects and activities within the project, but the CAP is a long lasting program of our organization that is happening for 20 years and it's uh, incorporated in official school curricula. So we have legitimacy, le legitimacy uh, about implementing in schools and all our CAP facilitators that are working with uh, children and young people are educated in our uh, education and trainings, and then they implement it in their schools and classrooms. So it's part of the curricula. Uh, it's uh, verified by our Ministry of Education. So we have all the approvals from the, all the relevant stakeholders and public bodies. So yeah, maybe uh, it's uh, something that uh, you should also uh, consider uh, doing in your your country so yeah I cannot say that we have national curriculum but it's all over the Croatia and it's the same so yeah maybe maybe it's if that's the national curriculum you're talking about that would be amazing <laughs> yeah. I think what we see is lots of differences between schools across Europe and even within one country and even within one region and within one city different schools have different policies and address this topic in different ways. Sometimes there's a mental health policy in the school mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, prevention of bullying will fit in very well. Um, sometimes indeed it's more safety, um, but definitely the mental health angle. If a school wants to develop uh, a mental health support program, it will inevitably tackle bullying and cyberbullying. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 The mental health issues are nowadays very, very uh, more and more important, not only just to, for the kids, but also for young people, for the adults. Different yeah, and people. I think um, I just want to put one last question to you. Um, uh, can digital citizenship be a way to prevent bullying, cyberbullying? Well, I think it's uh, something that it will be a big part of reducing the numbers but and of course the part of the prevention unfortunately i'm not very positive about stop and prevent the cyber bullying for good because there's always new generation coming new ways of people trying to invade we saw the very uh, live uh, example of it uh, here on friday so yeah, we, we don't know how to, you, you prepare everything perfectly with the webinars, you uh, manage, you monitor the every, every attendee, even though there's uh, more than 100, 
and then two minutes before we're going live, somebody That's a good so example. There's, there's always somebody <laughs> who will you 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 can uh, you can plan for the month everything every step of the way how will you uh, try to be as uh, so that that we are monitor every possible outcome and situation there's will always be one more idea that you are not uh, you do you didn't remember and then you will have like this so yeah i think the digital citizens citizenship is something that is happening already uh, and we are in a way citizens digital citizenship because we have everything digital nowadays not everything but most of some most of our citizenship parts are digital and we are happening we are here now uh, and of course it's have a lot of a lot of pros and a lot of perks about having everything so available but also as the availability of everything on the online is happening, the responsibility of every of us arising also mm -hmm. to be to be very aware of some what's what's happening around us. No, for sure. I think yeah. it's something uh, well, which will always be there, and and that's why, in a sense, uh, you know, the notion of teaching emotional intelligence can be extremely complementary. Um, you know well, basic offline <laughs> human skills can be very, very important, I guess, to address this uh, both offline and online. Look, do we have any last questions? This is your time to ask all the burning questions. <laughs> I've, I've asked my burning one. I do have, uh, do, I, I don't know, Christian, do you want to have a, a final word or recommendation or was that was that too well i i just saw i, I just got uh, gone through the chat a little bit uh so and i saw a lot of uh first of all thank you for all that uh, uh thank me for the interesting presentation uh, I, it was really a pleasure yeah uh, it's popular huh? they liked uh, it and uh i saw a few of the comments uh, uh about um, <laughs> different programs yeah. And yes, I all invite you to uh, keep keep working, to contact me if you have any idea for collaboration, because I really think that uh, the power of collaboration from the different uh, parts of Europe and the good practice is example, because in Croatia, there's a uh, few examples that probably is not even considered in Germany or in Belgium or in Spain, Portugal but vice versa also so i'm always encouraging all the collaboration via projects via erasmus project uh, european social fund projects or even just to uh, do this kind of things to go live to talk about uh, different aspects of uh, things that are happening and it's more and more relevant uh, nowadays absolutely no it's and great yes that's uh, yeah I, I i actually have my like cheat sheets just to just to uh say everything that uh that uh, was coming from the chat comments so but that's great i mean I, I think for the chat we'll try and well we have a backup of the chat so we'll try and take out all the links as well uh for those of you who didn't uh manage to see all of them and thank you a last link there's so much out there you know i think clearly the resources are not lacking you know, uh, the, the, the energies are there, many forms of cooperation, many resources. Um, I guess, yeah, it's finding time, finding time and to maybe put this into practice and getting political support. We know that at the European Commission level, different DGs work on this. DG Just, you know, child rights, DG Employment, child protection, uh, well, child empowerment and participation. Um, and of course, the, the whole DG Connect world of the safer internet. So that there is lots of political will to support, you know, uh, all of this. But it, it, is, it seems to be a massive issue for our network, I have to say. And so I think we really need to stay vigilant and keep talking. And I would invite you all to stay in touch with Christian, of course, and stay in touch with each other. Um, I have the last, okay. Can I, we have a last uh, comment in the chat, but not to everybody. Look, I'm curious, since we have a few minutes left, can, can I do this, okay? I'm just, I mean, some of you have disconnected already, but <laughs> can you tell me what continent you're on? 
a great question actually what continents are you based okay in? but i've got some cheeky answers coming in as well <laughs> And maybe the Philippines is a death dog. Australasia. Okay, because we've had registrations from all over the world. But there you go. Okay, I'm not going to wait for too many votes. Go on then, a couple few, a couple few more. Okay, this morning, mostly Europe. Okay, a bit of Africa and Antarctica. Antarctica. Seriously? <laughs> Hello, I mean, Antarctica. I mean, are our penguins listening in? I don't know. Our Copa say penguins. We probably. will not judge. We will not judge. Hello, Is it penguins. cold down there? It's really nice. <laughs> okay, super. Look, I think, Isabel, do you want to wrap up? And um... Sure. Um, just to say a big thank you to Christian for being here and giving uh, all your wisdom and knowledge it was really interesting and to all of the participants who tuned in we were uh, like around a hundred so thank you to you as well and tomorrow we will have another great breakfast bite and this time on advertisement and um, uh, from, from from our martin from kofatsu families europe he will answer questions around um why did advertising take over the internet? How can we keep it in check? And are there any alternatives? And um, so be sure if you're interested to check in tomorrow and then on Wednesday, we have our last one. Um, but we encourage you to also have all these discussions online, on social media, for example. Um, and yeah, stay in touch and share all your knowledge that we have. It's very important to share what we know. And yes, and thank have you a to great all of week. You. Thank, thank you, Christian. thank you, Elizabeth and uh, Isabel. Thank, you, thank you very much for everything you're doing. And, and thank you to in. all the participants. Yeah, thank you to all of you guys. You're really great. And tune in tomorrow because after tomorrow, you will never see the internet in the same way again. Trust me. Okay. It's going to be an interesting one as well. So thank you so much, Christian. Thank you. Um, Isabel, Thanks. see you in the next days, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank Have you. a great day.